In our last video, we met Myron, the boy genius who invented Jet. We could have optionally taken him on as a companion, but doing so would have alienated Signor Mordino, owner of the Desperado Casino and head of the Mordino crime family. At the moment, we are doing tasks for him, so leaving him at the stables, we came back to New Reno only to be tasked with a new mission to intimidate the Corsican brothers. But heading back to Virgin Street to get our car, we discover that it's missing. Hey, where's my car? cries the chosen one. We see a number of people walking the streets, including this kid standing outside the cat's paw. Maybe he saw what happened to the car. The child glares at you sullenly as you approach. You can barely see his face beneath all that dirt. On the remains of his shirt is scribbled, Cody. Hey, Cody, we can say. You all right? You want something to eat, maybe? Cody continues to stare at us. You want a piece of fruit, Cody? Cody grabs the item and runs away. Oh, you're welcome, kid. Don't mention it, we can say. But then the kid just runs off into the cat's paw. Cody is a flighty little kid. He runs away no matter what food we give him. And he also flees at the sight of power armor, mutants, or ghouls. We can try to offer him something else. You thirsty? Want something to drink? But he continues to stare at us. And we can offer him any number of beverages, including alcohol. Want a brewski, kid? Never too young to start, Mom used to say. Uh, when she was sober, that is, the chosen one can say. Cody's eyes get wide, and he again runs away. Well, maybe next time. Or instead of offering him food and drink, we can say, Where are your parents? But he continues to stare at us. We can ask him this any number of times, and he just never speaks. He continues to stare at us. Hey, Cody, have you seen my car? And to our surprise, Cody nods. Can you tell me who stole it, we can ask? And Cody glances fearfully at the black man across the street, who's glaring at the two of us. We can start by saying, oh, really? Well, I'll deal with him later. Can you take me to where the car is right now? Cody nods again and then starts running off. We can run after him, and he leads us to the chop shop on the outskirts of the city. But if after doing so, we return to Virgin Street, we find Cody lying dead, surrounded by a puddle of blood. He has nothing on his inventory, but I think we know who's responsible. Heading to Jules, we can confront him. Hey! He smiles uneasily. His cologne slams into us like a wave. Name's Jules. What you need, my friend, huh? Uh, anything? We had a conversation with him when we first arrived at New Reno, but now we can accuse him. Cody is dead, Jules, and I'm betting you're responsible. You're dead. And with that, he races out of town, and we are hard-pressed to catch him. Or instead of choosing this path, going back to our conversation with Cody, we can instead say, Oh, really? Well, you know what's going to happen now, Cody? The bad man who stole Oxhorn's car and Oxhorn's fist will be having a private conversation across the street. We should have guessed this from the very beginning. After all, one of the first things Jules said when we arrived at New Reno was, That a car? Damn. Then, moving over to Jules... Jules, have you seen my car? I parked it here a while ago, and now it's gone. Your car, he says. You sure you parked it here? I ain't seen it. We can threaten him, or we can say, You sure you haven't seen it, Jules? Nah, brother, he says. I ain't seen it. I'll keep an eye out for it, though. Then he shrugs. Still, Reno's a big place. Jules, we can say, I have this crazy hunch that you might know where my car went. If you don't tell me where it is, I'll use you for target practice. Now talk. But he says, brother, I don't know nothing about your car. I ain't seen what happened to it, and I don't know where it is. He throws a hateful glance at Cody across the street. Really? That sounds like a lot of crap to me, we can say. And he says, all right, brother, all right. I seen some guys take the car not long ago, but there were too many of them for me to stop, you know, and shut up and take me where they went now, we can say. And he says, okay, okay. And here we can either follow him to the chop shop or we can save Cody's life by saying, by the way, Jules, if you so much as glance the wrong way at that kid across the street, I'll come back and I'll kill you so many times, you'll need multiple wills. Understand? 
Now lead on. And with that, Jules takes us to the chop shop. If we don't threaten him with bodily violence, the next time we return, we find Cody dead. But if we did threaten him, then when we next return, we find Cody safe and sound. Another way to find the location of the car is to bypass these conversations entirely and instead walk into the parking lot. And if our perception is high enough, as we pass closer to where the car was parked, we notice faint skid marks leading off to the north. We can ignore them or we can follow the tracks. No matter how we get here, we arrive at the chop shop. We stand at a pep gas refueling station. Our pip wide tells us that this looks like an old electrical pre-war charging station. A graveyard of stripped cars surrounds the building. We see two buildings to the north of us. Heading into the first one, we find a bunch of empty shelves. Can't find anything on any of these. And directly below this, we find two bathrooms, but both are empty as is the gated off storage area with a wagon and a bunch of barrels and spare tires. So moving north, we can open a door into a garage where we find our highwayman, but it's surrounded by a bunch of goons. The game describes each of these men as a greased covered mechanic. If our chosen one is a woman with high charisma, they're all pretty flirtatious. Check your oil. <laughs> you looking for some hot love? T-rays in the back. So don't bother going there. Damn, all them curves and me with no brakes. Aw oh, hell, I look like crap. Then you show up. Don't mind the grease, miss. But with a male chosen one, their flavor dialogue is a bit more automotive. Well, some of it. T-Ray slept with my sister and my mother and my dog. Grease is the word that I heard. Dum dum da dum. Fast, the highwayman goes from zero to 60 in less than a second. The Highwayman's got the power. 800 plus horsepower, in fact. The Highwayman's got a full analog system. 800 plus horsepower. Zero to 60 in less than a second. Cool, learning a bit about pre-war Chrysler's Highwayman lore. But it sounds like the leader of this operation is T-Ray, the man in the orange shirt in the room just above us. The game describes him as a good-looking black man. Er, no, wait. You see T-Ray. Okay. Who are you, he says. What are you doing here? We find a number of options here. We'll start by saying, You're the one who stole my car, asshole. And he says, Your car? Man, you don't even know what the hell you're talking about. That highwayman was scrap. Left lying around. And guess what? Now it's ours. Of course, you got an issue with that. We could settle it here and now. Yeah, I got an issue with it, we can say. Let's go, chop shop boy. And with that, he and some of the other goons in the chop shop turn hostile but many others of them flee. This is not a very difficult fight. And after killing T-Ray, we can simply walk up to the highwayman and drive it away. But we miss out on a number of great opportunities this way. So instead, we can try some of the other options. That car you have in the garage belongs to me, we can say. In which case he again claims to own it. But instead of challenging him to a fight, we can say, no, nah, that's cool. You can have the damn highwayman. Piece of crap anyway. Uses too much electricity. Smells like gecko inside. Trunk's too small. Be perfect for you though. See ya. And he stops us. Whoa, hold up there. Piece of crap? Smells like gecko? Man, what kind of jet you been taking? This is a highwayman. Not only does it run, but after I fix it up, it's gonna purr like a woman beneath me. What do you mean by fix it up, we can say? And he says, jazz up the engine, clean out the interior, put a brass rope around the license plate, and kick some of that crap out of the trunk. Make some room. When we are done, it'll be worth some serious chips to Mr. Bishop. Now, Mr. Bishop is another crime boss here in New Reno. We haven't met him yet, but he's the guy we're supposed to deliver the suitcase to that we got from Vault City. Now, if we've already met Mr. Bishop, then we can honestly tell him that we're one of Bishop's lieutenants, in which case he's supposed to hand over the car so as not to get in trouble. But if we haven't met Mr. Bishop yet, we have to pass a high intelligence, charisma, and speech check to get him to believe us when we say, I'm one of Bishop's lieutenants, I'm here for his car. He studies us and frowns. Yeah, sure you are. I know all of Bishop's lieutenants and you ain't one of them. He nods at the door. Get out of here before I lose my temper. But we can say I am one of Bishop's lieutenants. Now are we gonna deal or what? And if we fail the speech check, 
He sneers. Yeah, we're gonna deal, all right. Better hope you ain't got no family who's gonna miss you. And then he attacks. Now, I came to T-Ray here with a throwaway character who had 10 intelligence, 10 charisma, and well over 100 speech, and I still couldn't pass the check. I even came back with a character who had completed all of Mr. Bishop's quests, and even one who had become a made man for Mr. Bishop, and I still couldn't get this option to work right, so I'm not sure what I did wrong. But presumably this is one way we're supposed to be able to get the car back. Alternatively, we can say, you're trying to sell her to Bishop? I can meet Bishop's offer and then raise it some. And he says, you're gonna match Bishop's offer? That's a lot of Skrilla, man. A lot of chips. Plus, he's one of the top men in Reno, you know? I get him this machine. There's fringe benefits. We then have to pass a barter check. Does 500 chips change your mind? And if we fail, he says, man, that amount couldn't even afford to change my clothes, much less change my mind. You must think cars are cheap. How about 750, we can say? And he doesn't go for it. So we'll offer him a thousand chips. And he says, all right, then. It's a done deal. He scans the money quickly and pockets it. The highwayman's all yours. No matter how we get the car from TJ, once we do, he says, the car ain't got no battery juice, of course, and it ain't got none of the special amenities I was gonna add. We can offer him 300 chips for the upgrades, and he shakes his head. Now that ain't gonna cut it. 500 or nothing. If we accept the deal, he says done, and he takes the money. It's all taken care of. And look, you ever need batteries, come talk to me. I'll hook you up. Sounds good, we can say. Can I see what you have in stock now? And despite saying that he has a bunch of batteries in stock, all we find is a shotgun, a vanity mirror, some tools, ammo, and jimmy hats. Now I read that what he meant by having batteries in stock was that if we come back two weeks later, he'll give us some microfusion cells. But I tried this on a number of different characters that all made different decisions in New Reno, and all I ever got him to say was, who are you? What do you want? So I don't know if this takes place after the primary plot of the game, or if my game is just bugged. Now T-Ray offers us a very different set of choices if we play a female chosen one with high charisma. When we first talk to him, he says, Damn, look what just walked in. Looks like them upper body workouts is finally paying off. What can I do for you, sweet thing? Then when haggling for a price, we find an option to say, How about a night with me, T-Ray? You ain't never gonna have anything better. And his eyes slide up and down our body. I don't know if you're worth that, woman. This is a highwayman we're talking about. Oh, I'm worth all that. And more, we can say. And he says, curse me for a fool. It's a done deal, then. I get some playtime, then you can drive that highwayman out of here. Let's get to it, then. You want to go? Here? Well, and he looks us up and down. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business, we can say. The screen goes dark, and T-Ray wipes the sweat off of his body. Doggone woman. All right, then. The highwayman's all yours. But it ain't got none of them special amenities I was gonna add. Then, coming back to him, we can ask him if he can upgrade the highwayman. And when we begin to barter, we find an option to say, How about some more sweet love? And he says, Damn, woman! I just gave you sweet love five minutes ago! You trying to kill me? Come on, T-Ray. I need a fixin'. And only your sweet love is gonna do it. He looks us up and down again and says, a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Let's get down to bitness. And this time, the chosen one can get down to bitness. Now afterwards, the Pip boy tells us that we got the upgrade for the highwayman. But for some reason, we can repeat this dialogue option with T-Ray over and over and over again. It's T-Ray's lucky day. We can sleep with him nine times until... He explodes! <laughs> we really did kill him. Strangely enough, my game went black for the explosion animation, but we find his body lying here. And on his body, we find his store inventory. If we chose to go about getting our car back by buying it from him, or if we just want to get back the money we spent on the upgrade, we can always try to pick his pocket. And we find the money on his inventory. 
Now the chop shop has some decent loot if we are willing to steal. Most of these containers are far enough away from the people here that we can pick the locks and steal without getting caught. Though a few of the tables to the west may be a bit trickier. In T-Ray's office, we find some shotgun shells, booze, and a combat knife in his locked desk. Then in a locker in the southeastern corner of his office, we find a lock picking toolkit. His workbench has a radio, a tool, and some junk. Heading out of his office, we find another tool on the first table, a spanner on the second table, a leather jacket, knife, and some money in the second lower locker, and some booze and jimmy hats in the fourth lower locker. The table in the southwest corner has some junk. The lower table against the wall to his office has a crowbar, and the upper table has a sledgehammer. Both of the upper workbenches have some junk. Finally, the far right locker against the southern wall to T-Ray's office has a crowbar, and the far left locker against the southern wall has a combat knife, some beer, and some money. When done, we can finally take our highwayman back. The upgrade we paid for was increased trunk space. We can now carry more items. If we come back later after completing the primary plot in the game, T-Ray can install grav plates as an upgrade that reduce fuel consumption. But of course, we'll have to wait to do that at another time. Now that we've got our car back, we can finally head back to New Reno to check in on the Corsican brothers. And we'll tackle that in my next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week, so if you don't want to miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. No dice. Celebrate your luck, or lack thereof, with this shirt about everyone's favorite perfectly preserved pie. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.